Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. My name is Rich, the host around these parts. Thank you so much for trusting us with the, the next few minutes of your time. I know you're a busy church leader. You've got a lot of things you could be investing in right now. And so we're just hoping that uh, the next few minutes will invest back into you. Today, super excited to have Scott Cochran with us from the Willow Creek Association. He's the Vice President of International Ministries, which I think that means global domination for the WCA. <laughs> so uh, Scott, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Rich. It's so good to be with you here today. No, so glad to have you. For folks that don't know, uh, Willow Creek Association associated with Willow Creek Church in uh, in Barrington, Illinois, or really in Chicago land. Uh, sure. Fantastic ministry that's doing all kinds of great things around the world. Uh, you really should get to know them a little bit better. But Scott, why don't we? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at the WCA? Sure. Um, Willow Creek Association is very much a, uh, a global ministry. Uh, we're focused on Christian leadership development. Uh, one of the main ways that we achieve that is through a conference we do every year called the Global Leadership Summit. Uh, that conference really began in uh, 1995. Uh, Bill Hybels, who's the senior pastor of the church and he's the chairman of the Willow Creek Association, uh, he really just wanted to talk about leadership with some leaders. He, uh, he believed, as many of us do, that uh, you know, leadership is the ball game, humanly speaking, when it comes to the, the ministry of the local church. And so in 1995, Bill gathered up with a few hundred leaders at the, the campus of Willow Creek Church, and they talked about leadership for a couple of days. Well, 20 years later, this past year, uh, we had more than 200,000 people take part in the Global Leadership Summit, uh, both here in the United States and all around the world as well. Mm -hmm. So my little part of that is helping to lead our efforts outside the United States. So uh, I actually began with the association in Canada. Uh, you might hear a little bit of a Canadian accent come out of that. <laughs> it's great. Uh, uh, we have affiliates around the world, and for many years I helped to lead the Canadian affiliate of Willow Creek. And then as our growth continued globally, uh, I came down here to Chicago a couple of years ago, and now I help to lead what we're doing essentially outside the United States. Very cool. Well, obviously, leadership development and leadership is critical to, as you said, you know, local churches. And I'd love to dive into that. Why don't we explore that a little bit, bit more? Why is it so important? Why is leadership and leadership development so important to a local church? Well, I think, I, I know for me, and I'll answer that very personally, Rich, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to my years with the Willow Creek Association, I also spent a number of years in Canada mm -hmm. as the executive pastor of a large church. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way we were structured at that time, as many churches would be, there was the, the senior pastor, and I was his only direct report. And so all the staff, about 35 staff, answered to me and so on. And I think I very quickly came to realize that the uh, the primary value that I can add to our ministry is to build a team and from a, a leadership point of view. At the end of the day, I wanted to make sure that uh, year over year over year, the leadership capacity of our team was improving because I knew that if that was happening, that all the other ministries would be flourishing as well. Again, humanly speaking, mm -hmm. you see the Holy Spirit can only do what the Holy Spirit can do. Mm -hmm. But humanly speaking, I just always believed, as does, I believe, the Willow Creek Association, that if we can increase our capacity as leaders, everything under our watch, in a sense, is going to flourish. Well, you have a really unique position, obviously, seeing um, a lot of churches around the world that are doing this well, mm -hmm. um, that are developing leaders, and obviously you're trying to help them uh, do an even better job. What are a, you know? What's a handful of those kind of things that you're seeing in churches that are developing leaders well? I think the um, you know we most of us uh, who have been involved in the in the local church, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen our our skills develop in whatever our particular uh, role might be. Mm -hmm. So if we're in children's ministry, then we want to get better as a children's pastor and learn the latest tools, learn the latest techniques, and so on. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the movement that really God has been um, been fostering around the world is just as you're saying to actually take the leadership side of it up to another level mm -hmm. I was recently in uh, Thailand working with a group of leaders in Bangkok and I, I had a conversation with them basically saying what is your vision for the church in Thailand mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll just unpack this a little bit because mm -hmm. you'll see I think a taste of how the leadership side fits into this 
and they've got a masterful uh, strategic plan for the church in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is a country that right now has about 400,000 Christians in it, in a population of about six and a half million. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, 65 million. 65 million, about oh, 400,000 wow. Christians. Now, they have a goal to see that by the year 2030, they want to see 10% of the country Christians. Wow. And so uh, that means that by the year 2030, they want to go from 400,000 Christians up to about uh, 7 million Christians by that time. Well, when I asked them about this, you could just see their passion coming out as they were talking <laughs> about this. And they're rolling out their charts and everything. And they've got a strategy around evangelism. And they've got a strategy around church planting and so on. But they said right at the heart of this, we need new leaders to be developed. Mm -hmm. Because none of this is going to work if we don't have leaders in place who can now more effectively lead our churches and lead these strategies and so on. And so for them, the way they tie into us is the Global Leadership Summit is at the heart of that. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a bigger scale, I think Thailand serves as an example of what we're seeing all around the world, that as Christian leaders get more developed, then everything that they're doing, everything that God is trying to do with them is going to accelerate. Absolutely. Well, what would be, you know, so let's say there's a church leader listening in. They're saying, yeah, okay, well, I want to raise the temperature of, uh, you know, the kind of leadership development culture at my church. Mm. What are, you know, a few things they could be thinking about or doing some steps they could be taking to kind of solve that, to say, okay, I want, here's a few things we could, be, we could be doing coming this next year even. Sure. I always viewed it this way, um, to, to break it right down into some very uh, practical steps. Mm -hmm. Every year on January 1st, or whenever your church leadership calendar begins, mm -hmm. I would always, and again, I'll think back to the days when I was an executive pastor, mm -hmm. I would always look at my team and realize that my goal over the next 12 months is to, and I'll borrow a phrase from Bill Hybels, I want to take them from here to there. I want to see them develop. In other words, 12 months from now, I believe it's the responsibility of the senior church leader to realize that the team I've got right now must be a better team one year from now. Mm -hmm. Their skills must be sharper. Their leadership abilities and capacity must be better. Um, there must be a healthier team, culture, and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I believe the first step is to simply recognize that's the responsibility, but then you've got to follow that up and actually start to instill that in very practical ways among mm -hmm. the team members themselves. But I think the first thing is simply declaring that, gathering up your team and saying, gang, one year from now, you are going to be better in your leadership individually, and as a team, we are going to be a stronger team. Now let's get at it. Nice. Now, as an organization that does a lot of leadership development, I would imagine, you know, there there could be a temptation that church leaders look at you and say, well, they'll, we'll just go to the leadership summit and that'll do it. Is it possible for churches to completely outsource leadership development? Great question, Rich. And the short answer is no. <laughs> I think we all need to, uh, there's two extremes that, that I've often seen, and you've just nailed one of them. And that is that the, the job of leadership development, that falls on some other organization, mm -hmm. whether it's the Willow Creek Association, whether it's Catalyst, whether it's all these wonderful ministries and organizations that do that. The other extreme I've seen, though, is that uh, is the senior leader who says, no, thank you, we don't need any help because we are the grand repository of all leadership development acumen and, and so on. So you can make a close little huddle kind of deal. I think healthy leadership development recognizes that it's our responsibility. I have a responsibility to develop myself. I have a responsibility to develop my team. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to draw on resources all over the place. Mm -hmm. And by the way, even at the Willow Creek Association, we very openly say we are not you know, the sole pipeline of leadership development stuff. Uh, even as a team ourselves, mm -hmm. we, uh, we borrow and draw from all sorts of resources here in the United States and, and around the world. We're simply part of that piece of leadership development that I think God is raising up these days. Nice. What are churches, you know, kind of spending on this part of the, the you know, the equation? Is there any rules of thumb or, you know, is it, it, it can you get away with just, you know, listening to podcasts or, or should you should you actually be looking to spend some money on it? I think the resourcing it is the, um, is a critical function of this. Mm -hmm. Actually providing resources behind leadership development turns it from a value into a plan. Mm -hmm. Because you can stand in front of your team you know, all day long and, and, uh, and chant and, and cast a vision about leadership development, but at the end of the day, show me your budget. Mm -hmm. you know, are you actually getting behind this? Uh, if I can get very, very practical about that, Rich, mm -hmm. something that I always did, both in my role as an executive pastor and even now in my role with the Willow Creek Association, is I would, uh, with each member of the team, I would work with them and allocate a leadership development portion of their budget mm -hmm. and say, look, we're going to get behind you to develop this kind of deal. 
But there would also be a uh, pool of resources that I think the senior leader has to hang on to themselves because quite frankly, there might be a young leader that you want to put disproportionate uh, leadership development behind. Mm. Or there might be a senior leader that says, you know, this season I need to get them even a little bit more focused. So you want to put a little bit more there. Mm. But at the end of the day, uh, you can't just have a value. You can't just talk the game. Right. Uh, just one other important side note on that. I also think it's very important that the, uh, the actual plan, every, every member of the team, I believe, needs a plan. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to sit down with your team members and say, okay, let's talk about what is your plan for the next 12 months? How are you going to develop? What are the areas of skills or whatever it is you need to, to go and work on? And the thing that I always emphasize with my team is that I need them to drive the plan, not me. Mm -hmm. Because, and again, let me bring it right down into a local church context. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would have the, the children's pastor reporting to me. I would have the, the worship pastor reporting to me and so on. Well, quite frankly, I don't know anything about children's ministry. Right. Right? I don't know anything about worship and, and arts, you know, from, a, from that uh, mm -hmm. perspective. And so I say, look, you've got to come to me with a plan, but I'll help you with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then certainly I'm going to help you resource that as well. Uh, one of the things I often found was that uh, when, you, when you give people the opportunity to develop their own leadership development plan, it's amazing how creative they can get mm -hmm. in, a, in a very, very wonderful way. Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then, I, had, I remember I had one guy up in Canada, and you can probably imagine, Rich, that the, the winters in Canada can be kind of brutal. <laughs> right. I had one guy that every year it seemed that his, uh, his leadership development plan was always anchored in a conference in February in San Diego or in <laughs> Florida or something like that. So you got to watch those kind of things. But yes. you know, I want to know, okay, what, what books are you wanting to read this year? Mm -hmm. What conferences do you want to attend? What kind of uh, mentoring networks are you going to get involved with and so on? And then you walk them through the plan as well. Very cool. Well, is there anything else you want to share with our listeners kind of about leadership development or encouraging them, you know, to think about leadership development in their churches? Well, again, I think that you've got to um, you, you've got to walk with them is what I would always say. You've got to let them know that this is a big deal. You've got to let them know that you are invested in them in taking this journey with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would always do that in a couple of ways. You, you know, first of all, uh, you know, I'm a huge advocate of the twice a year. Uh, Review, review conversation mm -hmm. and that was never a big scary thing mm -hmm. that to me added value to people to let them know that every year in July every year in in January you know, I'm gonna sit down with Scott and I'm gonna talk about how things are going mm -hmm. well in that conversation I'm gonna talk to them about hey uh, you said you're gonna read these books and you're gonna attend these conferences uh, you said you were going to check out Rich Birch's podcast every single week and so on <laughs> and I wonder like so have you been doing that and right. if not why not mm -hmm. uh, I would there might have been a number of reasons for them to tell me that uh, they weren't able to do something on their plan, but I would never let them get away with saying, well, I was too busy doing ministry. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, developing yourself, that's the value back to the local church that we need. We need you improving as you're, as you're going along. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing is not only in those twice a year conversations, is that every week when that person comes into my office, they knew that the first question I would probably ask them is, so what are you reading these days? Mm -hmm. Or what have you been listening to? What are you learning right now kind of deal? Mm -hmm. And that wasn't simply a way to, to insert some accountability. I think they knew I'm genuinely interested in this. You know, right. I want to know what you're learning. Let's have a conversation about how you're developing, what you're learning, and, and so on. So you end up creating a leadership development culture in your church as well. This is the Unseminary Podcast, stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Great. Well, we're going to jump into the lightning round, that part of the show where we ask similar questions of folks who are on the show every week. Super excited to have Scott Cochran with us from the Willow Creek Association. Uh, he's a great leader and super happy to have him uh, on the show today. So, Scott, what are some online resources that you're using these days uh, to kind of help your ministry? Well, this is going to be sound very, very, very basic, but... Uh, <laughs> My world, as you mentioned earlier on, Rich, is global, okay? Mm -hmm. So what you and I are doing right now and with your uh, podcast audience is what I'm doing all the time because I work essentially outside the United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, Skype, GoToMeeting, and so on, those are the tools that uh, tools of the trade for me. We're also uh, developing and exploring a few other options as well right now mm -hmm. just to keep us uh, connected with our leaders around the world. So if there's an online communication tool, chances are it's in my bucket someplace. Right, you've tried it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, I'm excited for this one because you were talking about books earlier. What's a book that you've read in the last you know, six, eight months uh, that's had an impact on your thinking or ministry? 
Well, you know, I, I trust that that you and perhaps many of your uh, many of your audience uh, had a chance to check out the Global Leadership Summit this year. You know, part of the the joy of, of my role as I get to to know these leaders and read their books and so on. Well, there was one this year that uh, just jumped off the bookshelf for me, and that was Susan Cain's book, Quiet, mm. and it's become a, a great bestseller. Mm. Essentially, she had the audacity to suggest that, he's in a, that even as an introvert, you can be an effective leader as well. Right. And uh, for those of us who are in that personality category of being a, an introvert, it was very freeing and very refreshing to realize, wow, I'm not weird. Even as a person <laughs> who enjoys being quiet sometimes, that I can actually lead effectively in that way as well. So Quiet by Susan King was one of my favorites this year. Nice, fantastic. Uh, what are some other ministries that you're looking at um, these days, you know, are kind of inspiring you, you're kind of learning from, who are some of those? Well, you know, there are so many other great leadership development organizations. I talked about Catalyst uh, earlier as well. We learned so much from an organization like Catalyst. Uh, the main, uh, the large churches in in uh, uh, North America, we learn a lot from. We just had our team members over at the, the Movement Day in New York just a while ago as well. And I think Movement Day and the whole... Um, city movement is something we're paying a lot of attention to these days even as we do our work globally because it, and as you and your your guests are familiar with the the city movement concept the idea that god really seems to be at work these days in the cities he's sort of drawing his uh, his people into the cities and so on well of course we do you know hundreds and hundreds of global leadership summit events around the world in the heart of cities primarily. So we're learning a lot right now from the city movement concept as well. Cool. All right, so if you could get 15 minutes with any leader alive today uh, that you could just spend some time with, who would you want to spend that time with and why? That's got to be a hard question for a guy like you because you've spent a lot of time with a lot of different leaders. But who, uh, who would you want to spend that time with? Well, I don't know if this is going to add a lot of value up there <laughs> Great. because some of them are, are kind of uh, uh, banal even. Yeah, but, yeah, come um, on, that's fine. Um, we had a guy at the summit a few years ago mm -hmm. that I wish I could have met and spent time with. I didn't get the chance, and that was Tony Blair, the okay, former yeah, prime yeah. minister of uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, just someone like that who led in very tumultuous times mm -hmm. with a huge bandwidth of responsibilities. I've got a personal uh, interest and fascination with the global politics, and so people of that level uh, have always interested me. And to be honest, there's a few hockey players out there I'd like to, to meet as well. <laughs> but as a Canadian, you kind of have to say that. Nice. Yeah. Now, which which hockey team are you cheering for these days? That's got. Are you a Blackhawks fan now or no? Well, still okay. Vancouver? Politically, yes. I cheer I cheer for the Blackhawks <laughs> and I was cheering them on to the Stanley Cup last year. But uh, I'm a Vancouver boy. Okay, so you're right. And this might be the only day of the whole year that I can say that the Canucks are number one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Great. All right. Well, I appreciate today. Just one last question. Uh, you know, when you're just looking to kind of kick back, relax a little bit, um, what do you do for fun when you're not, you know, involved in global domination with the uh, Willow Creek uh, Association? Well, I always call it the, the three R's. Uh, I love to read. Mm -hmm. I love to run. And I love relationships. So even as an introvert, I love just being with people, with our, our circle of friends. Uh, my wife and I, we have a, a great circle of friends uh, here at Willow Creek Church and in our neighborhood and so on. So usually if someone's trying to find me, I'm probably having a coffee someplace with a good friend or reading or taking a run someplace. Nice. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks so much, Scott. If people want to get in touch with you or with the Willow Creek Association, how can they do that? WillowCreek.com is our website, and you can find all the information about us and especially about the next uh, Global Leadership Summit. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary. <laughs>